Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, let's look at the Favorsky rearrangement and discuss it in detail. So let's quickly look at the principle of this rearrangement reaction. According to the principle, only an alpha halogenated ketone can undergo a Favorsky rearrangement to give you a carboxylic acid or a derivative of carboxylic acid in the presence of a base. So this is the general idea that you should be having. The main reactant that you choose is a ketone in which the alpha carbon atom is substituted by a halogen. It can either be chlorine, bromine or iodine. Now let's look at the minute details of this reaction. The first point is clear. The reactant should be alpha halogenated ketone and the halogens can be chlorine, bromine or iodine. The next thing is the reagent. The base that you are adding can either be a hydroxide, alkoxide or amine. It can be either of these three. And then the product that you get is either a carboxylic acid or a derivative of carboxylic acid like the esters or the amide. Now, how do you determine the product formed? I told you there are three possibilities. It can either be a simple straightforward carboxylic acid or you can either have one of the derivatives, esters or amide. But how will you be sure which of, your, which of these three is your product? So for this, let's look at the factors that influence the product formation. Now the first one is the reactant. Now depending on the reactant, your product might change. First thing that you should remember is if your ketone is monohalogenated, that is if there is only one halogen present in the alpha carbon position, then you only have to account for one bond. You remove the chlorine in the reaction because chlorine is not needed here. You remove chlorine or bromine or iodine. So that one bond which you have to account for can be replaced by another atom. So there is going to be saturation. That is you don't find any unsaturation in the product that is formed. But imagine in case of di and trihaloketones, you may have two or three halogens present. So in the verge of removing the two or three halogens, you will have to account for two or three bonds which immediately comes to a point where you think of unsaturation. So that in that case, when you have a di or a trihaloketone, you can expect an unsaturated acid with a double bond or a triple bond. So just by looking at the reactant, one can guess the product, whether it is going to be saturated or it is going to be unsaturated. So that's the first factor. The second factor is the base base or the reagent that you use. This is also a simple method of guessing. First is if you use an hydroxide, the base hydroxide when used will give you an acid. You can, you can correlate, you can imagine that when you replace chlorine and hydrogen and then you bring in OH minus, you will definitely get COOH which is carboxylic acid straight away. So if you have an hydroxide as your base, you'll get acid. If you have alkoxide, OCH3, like methoxide, you are going to get ester because OCH3 is given as a base and you already have C double bond O in your reactant. So C double bond O, OCH3 is going to give you an ester. So that is clear. And now if you have an amine, it's going to give you an amide because NH2 from your, if it's a primary amine, then you will have NH2 from your base, which will add on to the C double bond O present in your reactant. And these two will rearrange together and will give you COnH2, which is an amide. So from the base that is given above the arrow, you can easily determine or you can easily predict the product that can actually be formed. Now let's look at some of the general reactions to understand the factors because what I told you just now can be better understood only when you apply it in a reaction. So 
I will definitely show you an example for each of the factors that I um, told you previously. Now let's look at the general reactions and go into the mechanism. So the first reaction involves a simple open chain structure or a simple compound which is 2-chloro-2-methyl-butanone. It is alpha halogenated because there are two alpha carbon atoms if you have noticed because this is your functional group ketone and you have two carbon atoms that are directly attached to it. So you have alpha and alpha prime which means that there are two alpha carbon atoms and there's actually a significance for this which again I'll explain when we move on to the mechanism. So now uh, we saw that this alpha haloketone is going to undergo the rearrangement reaction in the presence of methoxide. So you must have guessed that you are only going to get an ester that is a derivative of a carboxylic acid and that's what you get as a product here. So we are only seeing the general reaction now. I will give the mechanism of each of these reactions in the course of this video. So the next one is involving a cyclic ring. Now you can see that the cyclic ring is also somewhat similar to an open chain structure in case of rearrangement reactions. You don't see a major difference or anything. It's the same. Only thing that changes here is that there is a cyclic structure here and there is no cyclic structure in the previous one. So you, I'm taking 1-chlorocyclohexanone again in the presence of methoxide ion. So I'm going to get a cyclic ester. Okay, so these are the two reactions that I'm going to discuss in detail with mechanism so that we can understand it for both the types that is for cyclic uh, reactions involving cyclic ring structures and reactions involving open chain. Now um, let's move on to the mechanism. Now the most important concept that you should be knowing before we start with the mechanism is ketoenol totomerism. Basically, this is the concept or this is the idea behind this entire rearrangement reaction. So if you know this concept thoroughly, you can definitely answer any question that is asked from this rearrangement, this particular rearrangement reaction. So we know that tautomers are structural isomers that are chemically in equilibrium and can easily be interconverted. So those are the tautomers and we see that the structural isomers or tautomers in this case are the keto form and the enol form. Now we have the keto form which is nothing but the ketone. But where during the course of this reaction do you get an enol form? And how does this enol form ultimately give you the product which is either a carboxylic acid or a derivative of carboxylic acid is the point of study. Now let's look at the ketoenol tautomerism. Now I have a ketone here. There is an alpha carbon that is the carbon that is directly attached to the functional group which is the ketone. So this is the alpha carbon and there is a free hydrogen on the alpha carbon atom. So one of the most important and determining factors for ketoenol tautomerism is that there should be a free hydrogen or free proton present on the alpha carbon atom in the ketone that is taken. So if this criteria or this condition is satisfied then that particular ketone will undergo tautomerism to give the enol form of it that is its own structural isomer which is an enolate or an enol form. So now let's look at this mechanism. Now the first step involves deprotonation or removal of proton. It will be removed as H plus and now you get R1CR2 C double bond O R3. This is R3. So now this carbon will have a negative charge. It will become a carbocation and this is called as enolate ion. That is, it's the precursor of an enol that is going to be formed. Now, this enolate ion is highly unstable. So, to in order to make it more stable or in order to stabilize it, the double bond shifts. 
like this so you get r1 and this negative charge will become a bond and will form a double bond between this carbon and this carbon so you get r c r2 double bond c o minus r so this ion or this intermediate that is formed is also unstable because the oxygen is carrying a negative charge in order to nullify this it's going to react with a proton or it's going to get protonated now what will you get you'll get r1 c double bond c oh and r3 r2 this is an enol enol is nothing but an alkene where the hydroxy group is present across the double bond it is attached to one of the carbons across the double bond so that's an enol now you have the keto form which is first isomer and this is the second isomer structural isomer and these two are interconvertible and are in chemical equilibrium so this is the basis of keto enol tautomerism so i told you in the very beginning that there are certain conditions for a ketone to undergo keto enol tautomerism not all ketones undergo this only ketones having a carbon alpha carbon with free hydrogen present will undergo keto enol tautomerism so this condition has to be kept in your mind and we will see if the ketone that we have chosen for the Faborski rearrangement is satisfying this condition so this is our reactant a ketone with two alpha carbon atoms here you have not just one but three hydrogens free hydrogens that are present and this can be easily shifted or donated and the other alpha carbon is having chlorine attached to it halogen so now our ketone is set to satisfy all the conditions that is necessary for keto enol tautomerism this is further proved by the intermediate that is going to be found if you take any chemical reaction there is going to be an unstable intermediate formed in it this unstable intermediate is going to be positively charged or a negatively charged ion so in that case we see that this ion will undergo stabilization to give you a product but here the intermediate that is formed is an enolate ion this formation of enolate ion further proves that our reactant is undergoing a keto enol tautomerism so let's look at the mechanism and see how this point is being justified now we know that the first step is the removal of hydrogen which is removed as h plus so when hydrogen is removed you have c ch3 ch3 cl c double bond o c h h minus carbocation this is nothing but the enolate ion so you can refer to the previous reaction that i have shown you in keto enol tautomerism this is the enolate ion that is formed this is the first intermediate there are going to be a couple of intermediates but this is the most important intermediate and the first intermediate now i'm marking it as int1 because i have already marked i1 in the previous reaction so intermediate 1 now this intermediate is going to further undergo reactions where cl has to be removed cl again is not needed in this reaction so it has to be removed as cl minus now you have c ch3 ch3 and a plus because when cl is removed this becomes a carbocation c double bond o c minus h and h now you have a positive charge and a negative charge on the neighboring carbon atoms so you have to see that there is a bond that's going to be formed so how will you write that c ch3 ch3 c 
C double bond O C H H and another bond so this compound is formed make sure that the valency of carbon is satisfied all carbons are having four bonds each now this again is not very stable this cyclic ring structure is not very stable so it will undergo some sort of rearrangement or it will undergo distortion to give you a simpler product which is happening by the shifting of double bond this oxygen C double bond O is going to shift like this and due to this shifting this bond will shift like this so what product will you get you will get a carbanion again a negative charge on this carbon and then you have straight away O minus so this is the product that you will get now this again is an ion it's highly unstable it's going to react vigorously so all of this is happening in the presence of the base which is also negatively charged so keep that in mind so this is also negatively charged and all of these reactions are happening in the presence of the negatively charged base so this can attack and take a position only when there is a positive charge obviously because I'm telling you this is a negatively charged base right so it will attack only the positive side now there is a partial positive charge here because the double bond is shifting from this carbon towards the oxygen so this will become more electronegative this will become more electropositive so there's going to be a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge on oxygen now the base that we have chosen is a methoxide ion which is an anion it has more affinity to a positive center so this is going to come and attack the positive carbon to form a bond so that will be c ch3 ch3 this negative charge remains and ch h c o c h 3 and o minus now this intermediate that is formed so this intermediate i'm naming it as second intermediate this is your third intermediate now the third intermediate that is formed is also highly unstable again you have to stabilize it somehow so i'm going to shift this negative charge because this negative charge can lead to the formation of a double bond so i am shifting this when i shift it i get ch3 ch3 i am not shifting a bond but the electrons there is a negative charge on carbon ch h c double bond o o ch3 now our ester is formed but this has to be stabilized further so now this negative charge is nullified by protonation plus h plus so what do you get you get ch ch3 ch3 ch h h c double bond o o ch3 which is nothing but an ester so this is an ester or a derivative of the carboxylic acid that you obtain by the rearrangement reaction of an alpha haloketone in the presence of a base and we also saw how keto enol tautomerism is happening because you're getting an enolate ion as an intermediate which proves that keto enol tautomerism is happening as a basic reaction here so this is the reaction or rearrangement seen in an open chain structure next we will move on to the cyclic ring structure so now we are going to look at the reaction involving a cyclic ring structure this is nothing but one chlorocyclohexanone here also you have two alpha carbon atoms 
one is substituted with Cl and the other one is having a free proton that is ready to be donated or shifted. So now the first step again here also you have all the conditions satisfied so keto enol tautomerism is going to happen. First step is the removal of hydrogen as H plus. So when removed you will get a carbanion that is a negative charge here double bond O and Cl. This is only your enolate ion first intermediate. This is highly unstable and moreover Cl will be removed from here that will be the second step. Cl is removed as Cl minus and what do you get? You get a carbocation. Already there is a carbanion on this side of the ketone and on this side you have a positive charge. So as I told you there is going to be an attraction and a bond is formed. So you get a ring structure that is somewhat like this. A bicyclic ring. So a bicyclic ring is formed by the bond formation between this alpha carbon that is this is alpha prime and this is alpha. So a bond is formed between these two alpha carbon atoms. Now this is also undergoing some kind of a change because your base has to be attached that is the attacking agent so it has to get itself attached to a positive center but you don't have a positive center here. So there is a shifting of this bond. So when this bond shifts you will get a positive center. So I am writing it like this for convenience sake you will get O minus and here there is a positive charge. There is a positive charge and this bond is present. Now OCH3 will attack the carbon that is having a partial positive charge. So the attack happens at this site and you get OCH3 and O minus. Now this O minus again will shift in order to form a double bond because this has to be stabilized. Now the nucleophile OCH3 minus from the base is going to attack this site, the positive site to give you another intermediate like this. It's going to be OCH3 and O minus. Now this bond shifts over here and this bond shifts here. By doing so what you get is So this is going to be your final cyclic ester. This shifting happens because there is a, a bond, an extra bond between these two. So the shifting of electrons or the shifting of bond happens to give you a cyclic ester. This is how the rearrangement happens in a reaction or in a reactant involving a cyclic ring. So I am sure you understood the concept of ketoenol tautomerism playing a role in these reactions because the intermediate, the first intermediate that is formed itself is an enolate ion. Only via this enolate ion do you get the product which is carboxylic acid or its derivative. So it clearly indicates that ketoenol tautomerism is the basic concept behind this rearrangement reaction. So yeah. That's it guys. I hope all of you understood Favorsky rearrangement and I also hope you enjoyed learning this. Thank you so much for choosing my videos. If you have liked my videos, 
please do share it with your friends so that they also get benefited and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because that's going to give me so much of happiness and another thing that i would like to share with you all is that my channel has reached 100 subscribers this wouldn't have been possible without you all so thank you so much for the love and support that you've shown so far and please continue to do so thank you all once again for being there with me and i am hoping to meet you all soon in my next video thank you